Page seven. Be careful. Is he coming in? No, oh, he's eating right now. How far is he right now? I'm hoping he doesn't take off after that. Wow. Is that to take our chances? I mean, if he goes broadside, a good clean broadside at 30, I'll take the shot, but I'm not going to force the shot. Yeah. Oh, there's my shot. I don't like that corn stalk right there. I think if we're going to find that buck today, this is where it's going to be. It's so thick in here that it is possible that he could be laying in here dead and uh, we just walk past him. Right now we're probably 300 yards from where I shot that deer. This is the only spot we haven't really looked in the area that we think that the deer spends a lot of his time. So this is where we're gonna hit next. I'm starting to wonder if the deer is even dead because we've covered within about a 60 acre area. I know we've spent seven hours, two people walking that. So you, know, you add that up and I don't know how fast we're walking, but even if we're walking two miles an hour for seven, seven hours, that's 28 miles total. If he's dead, he's not dead in the areas that we walked uh, because we covered it pretty well. We're not gonna quit after today. We'll look again tomorrow, day 28, November 14th. The shot was right here. The deer went this way and swung that way. And this is, that's all we know about him. Well, we just trashed another 20 acres of my hunting area. I'm gonna take this point out, then we'll swing around and drop back into the bottom. Quentin found some blood along the side of this slope. And I mean, we were quite a long ways away from where that buck was, and this blood is coming at a pretty rapid pace. By the time we get done, I figure it's going to be probably 155 acres to 160 acres that we're going to run through. I think we've covered 150 to 160 acres total in the last two days. I'm going to say right now that the deer isn't dead. The uh, search is off that we covered everything as thoroughly as we possibly could. So now I'm going to take a couple days off and uh, try to recharge my battery and, and uh, get a little bit of fire back in me to go after these deer again. I'm not going to hunt this deer for a while. Uh, I got too many bad memories now.
only time to start looking for that buck that I hit back in mid-November. This was a deer that I'd called the Big Seven. And we'll dive into a little bit more of the story of this deer as we go today. But I'm starting right on the edge of the yard. This deer lived in, in the best of my knowledge or scouting in this piece of timber right next to the house. Probably a 15 acre patch of timber, 10 to 15 acres. And I shot him about 300 yards from the edge of this timber. So I think this was his home. So I wanted to start my search for that buck here. And I can't believe that the hit didn't kill the deer. I couldn't believe that it didn't kill him shortly after I hit the deer back in November, let alone several days later when we finally wrapped up the search for this deer. And I'll talk more about the hit and about mystery hits and uh, that topic as we go through this search today. But again, I wanted to start right here by the house, but uh, it doesn't make very much sense because our dog Duke is really good at finding dead deer and dragging the parts up into our yard. Uh, it's, it's the classic kind of hillbilly front yard uh, here at the Winky home, but if nothing else, uh, Duke may not be worth a whole lot, but he is pretty good at bringing up either antlers or bones, or sometimes he'll bring up an entire, practically an entire skeleton. He hasn't brought up anything this winter that would resemble that deer. So I don't think he's close because Duke has got a radius. I don't think that buck is inside that radius. So we're gonna bypass the close stuff today, even though I, that's where I originally thought the deer had probably gone to die. We're gonna jump past that, cross the creek, go closer to where I actually took the shot, and then we'll work away from the search area that we used last fall. We didn't turn him up. Like I said, we looked for two and a half days, no sign of him, a few little blood spots here and there, very close to the hit site, and then nothing. So obviously he wasn't in the area dead, at least, where we did the search. If he is dead, or was dead at that time, it's deeper, uh, further in a direction that we didn't look. So we're gonna start there, look for sheds along the way, talk about mystery hits, and hopefully turn up something interesting today. So I really don't think he's this close because I think Duke would have brought him up uh, in these parts of him. But I'm still gonna make a sweep around this timber and I'm gonna cross the creek. And that hill right there is the scene of the crime. So I'm gonna go to that spot and then work up that valley in the opposite direction from where we looked uh, last year back in November. Hey Bill, right here in front of me. That's him right there. Golly. I hope that's not where he died. If that's where he died, I'm gonna be sick because, oh, man. I mean, the house is only 250 yards up the hill. This can't be where he died. Well, I mean, obviously he died somewhere around here. So I'm looking at this and there's, there's enough pieces here. I mean, there's hair and there's a shoulder blade, but I don't see any legs. But again, Duke could have dragged him up. I'm trying to figure out if this is where the deer died shortly after I shot him. I know we walked this though. There's no way it was here. I know it wasn't, because I know we walked this and there's nothing here but really low vegetation. So it died sometime after we stopped looking for him. But I'll tell you the ironic thing, right, right there, you can see a couple little knobs in the timber. That's where we found the sheds off this buck last winter. Not this past one, but the one before that. Right there on those little knobs, right, what are we, 40 yards, 30 yards away from the spot where we found the sheds, and then you go over the top of the hill and that's where the house is. I mean, this is where this deer lived. Boy, I mean, it's cool to find him back and I'll get a salvage tag from the game warden and take him to the house, but it's a shame that I wasn't able to recover that deer right after I shot him. Now I'm not gonna know how long it took. I mean, people are gonna think that we staged this, but we really didn't. I mean, this is the first time I've been out looking for him. This is right where he was laying dead. Uh, but getting back to it again, it's just a shame that 
that hit didn't result in a quicker kill. And I need to uh, dive into that a little bit more before we wrap up this episode about that hit and then mystery hits in general. But we had a lot of people weighing in on this hunt. I'd say, I mean, several hundred people, if not more, uh, gave me their opinion on what they thought. And it was about split 50-50 between the group that figured that the deer was dead and then the group that thought that he was gonna recover. I was in the group that figured he was dead, uh, but I was optimistic. When I didn't get any pictures of him, I put the cameras out here in his core for uh, three weeks in December. And I didn't get any pictures of him. But I know I drove right past here because the four-wheeler trail is right there. So when I was checking my cameras, even back in early December, which would have been three weeks later, four weeks later, I wasn't getting, I didn't see him. He wasn't, he wasn't dead yet then. So he had to have died or else gotten dragged up here, uh, which is possible sometime after the middle of December. So at least a month. Wow, that's amazing. And I thought I had Duke pegged. I thought I had him backtracked well enough to know what, where he'd been and what he'd, what he'd found, but obviously not. So let's talk about mystery hits for a second. We've had a few of them over the years, and I've seen a number of them personally that we haven't documented here on Midwest Whitetail. Uh, hits that look like they should have been a lot more instantly lethal. And uh, this one was behind the heart and maybe a little bit low for catching the liver. At the best, if it hit the liver at all, it would have been way low liver. Uh, it came in low, right behind the heart, and exited behind the elbow on the offside front leg, which to me should have resulted in a quick kill. The, the deer did not show too many signs after the hit. Uh, he went right back to chasing a doe within 20 minutes of hitting him. But we looked for him the next morning I uh, found one spot where he had bedded with some blood in it, and that was it for blood. We didn't find any more blood. We searched two and a half days after that for the carcass, didn't find it. We walked all these ditches and all these creeks and all this grassy area out here. So I know he wasn't dead yet then. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, it's bittersweet always whenever you find them after the fact. I mean, you want to have closure. You want to be able to understand what happened so that you can fix it so it doesn't happen again. But you don't like to find them dead like this. You hate it when you don't execute and do your job uh, when the deer is right in front of you. So that's, uh, I guess that's closing the chapter on the big seven, not the way we'd hoped. I mean, he's never been a, a real high scoring deer. He was actually a seven pointer the year before. I think this uh, G3 wasn't there, but he was a cool deer. He was five years old this past season and he lived within just a couple hundred yards of our house. And that's what made him my number one target last year. So it's always gonna be, you know, certain bucks that grab your attention. They may not always be the biggest ones, but a lot of times they have an interesting story or there's something about the deer that really captures your imagination and that's the one that you're after. And this guy really became almost an obsession for me. I mean, just the way he kept kind of zigging when we zagged. Uh, but, well, I've got him now and he'll end up on the wall. It just won't be the way that I'd planned originally going into last season. I'm gonna FaceTime Quentin Brown. He was the cameraman that I had this past fall that helped me on all my hunts and helped me search for this deer and just let him know that we found him. I don't know much about this technology. Uh, Quentin, what are you doing? Shouldn't, shouldn't you be in class? No, I just got out. Just got out. You just got up. <laughs> well, you'll never guess where we found him. Where? Right below the house. Literally 200 yards from the house. You know, remember when I pointed out where we found the sheds from that deer? Uh, two springs ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. 
we're probably 30 yards from that spot, right out in that open field, that grass field. No kidding. Yeah, so you, you know he couldn't have died here. That's he, where we hunted him in October. Well, and I, I came down through here many times with the four-wheeler in December running trail camera here to see if I could find him back. And I would have driven within 20 feet of where he's laying. He had to have died either someplace else and got dragged here by the dogs or he died sometime in, you know, later part of December. It's nuts, isn't it, that he was, he's laying, I mean, I didn't look for him yet this winter because I was waiting, you know, for the right conditions and stuff. Well, he's been laying here since probably sometime in December, just 200 yards from the house, right out in the open. Hmm. I mean, that's where you thought you'd find him, right yeah. there in that little, his little more area. Yeah, yeah. He definitely lived here, but can you see it? Oh, there he is. So let me give you... Okay, so there, there he is, and right on top of the hill is the house. I mean, he's right out in the open here. Jeez. Does it look like he was dragged at all, or did he just it, died right there? It's hard to tell. The only thing here is his spine and, and one shoulder blade, but this is in Duke's domain. So anything that... Duke didn't bring the house. I know it. He, he probably brought every other piece from this deer up to the house except the, the head. Cause there's bones scattered all around our yard. Man, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I just didn't think any of it matched up with a deer, you know, of this size, but I probably wasn't paying close enough attention to the size of the bones and the hooves and stuff that he was pulling in. So I think, I think the takeaway on this one, you know, the best I can come up with is that sometimes they don't die as quick as you think. And then you either, you know, either you abandon the search too soon or you search too soon, you know, one or the other. So I, I think that, that I just abandoned the search too soon, but I mean, it could have been, it could have been weeks later. Oh yeah. You think the liver, is that what you did? I think it was the forward stomach and then a little piece of the offside lung. I think it was under the liver. I gotcha. You know, right behind the heart, right under the liver maybe caught a little front paunch, and then diaphragm. I talked to a couple of veterinarians about that, and they said that the deer won't necessarily die if you puncture the diaphragm. You know, I, I figured they would just spasm, you know, and then, that, then they wouldn't be able to breathe, but they said that's not the case. Well, we're gonna wrap it up and uh, right. pull this episode to a close, but we thought you'd get a kick out of, you know, how it all went down. They feel kind of silly, but at least we found him. Right, yeah, no kidding. right by the house. Golly. All right. Well, good luck with your classes. Uh, oh yeah. When you graduate, stay in touch. Hopefully, I can help you find a job. All right. Will do. Okay. Talk to you soon. All right. See ya. Yep. Bye. And so ends the story of the Big Seven. It's pretty disappointing overall, the way that the hunt finally went down, but. I guess I'll take some consolation in finding the rack. Uh, not the way I'd hope to do it, but well, that's it for this week's episode. I'm going to be back again, obviously next week. We'll be digging into something else. I mean, we were always holding this out as what we're going to do in the future, but now that we've got this deer, probably do a little bit more shed hunting, start talking about food plot plans, uh, hunting strategies. We, we dive into a lot of stuff during the off season, but well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. Remember to always dream big.